Hey everyone, I just wanted to do a quick introduction to this video um, to help explain a couple of things um, you know, before people see the video or see pictures of this car. Um, I, first of all, made this video, this walk around video, months ago. I think it was back uh, in December. Um, I've just been so busy I haven't had a chance to put it out there for people to see. Um, but the car's being shown this summer. We're taking it out, showing it. So I figured it's a good time to put, you know, put some pictures and video out. So I guess what I'm trying to explain is that, you know, there are things I've done to this car in particular um, that other people have seen and have, you know, pointed out that I've done them incorrectly. You know, in particular, this throttle cable. Um, you know, people have said I've installed it backwards. Like, hey, you know, you did that wrong, and. That's in human nature. We always want to pick apart other people's work. Uh, I do it myself. So I'm just trying to show and prove that, you know, I do things with a purpose. And if I've done it that way, it's because it's, you know, it was supposed to be that way. Um, the important thing to remember, and this is across the board, you know, whether it's a Viper, a GTO, you know, it doesn't matter. Every factory, every manufacturer, they did things a little differently. You know, and then within that, if that company had several different plants, they did things differently at each plant. Um, and then you dig a little deeper, you know, worker to worker, they did things a little differently. Um, you know, to, to narrow this down, we're talking about, yeah, Pontiac and, and the Pontiac GTO. Um, you know, you could say A bodies in general, but the Pontiac GTO, that car, you know, year to year, was very different and that car plant to plant was very different. You can take a 66 GTO and look at one from Baltimore plant, from Pontiac plant, from you know um, Framingham plant, Kansas, wherever, and they're all just a little different. Um, just you know slight nuances but they're there. And the throttle cable is one of those things. Um, most people when they restore a GTO they are always install these. I'm going to show you this up close. They always install these so that this face is against, let's say my finger is the firewall, it's against the firewall, and the bolt is going through into the interior. 90% of the cars I see, that's how they're set up. I know for a fact at the Pontiac plant that these were installed so that, there's the firewall, this was put through the interior against the firewall like this, and the bolts were put in from the interior protruding into the engine bay. Um, a lot of people, that's what I'm saying, they see that and they're like, yeah, you're doing it wrong. Nope, that's, that's how they did it. Um, and I've seen that. I've seen that in a few different plants. I believe um, Kansas, I think, is the other plant where I've seen that happen a few times. Um, but I know Pontiac cars, you know, built in Pontiac, Michigan, that's how they did it. So my point in all that is that there are certain things I did to this car that people might want to pick out, pick apart, but I've done, you know, and, and whatever car I'm working on, it doesn't matter what the car is. I always do, you know, extensive research, um, you know, look into the history of things. I, you know, talk to people who, um, who know, you know, certain, um, you know, they, they specialize maybe in a certain um, aspect or field of the car. Um, I always try to seek out, you know, super low mileage examples to look at. You know, you, you, you bring all of that together, pull all the information together, and you're able to put together a, you know, accurate and correct vehicle. Um, so I do that all the time. I think it's very important. And like I said, people are still gonna pick it apart, and that's fine, but I just wanna prove to people that, you know, hey, I did this for a reason. Like I said, I do things with a purpose, you know, when I'm working on the cars. Um, there has to be some give and take, I believe, um, especially when it comes to concourse judging, um, you know, a good judge will understand that there is slight differences and they will know what those are. Um, I think that a lot of people who restore cars nowadays, there seems to be just this very strict standard um, in which things are done. and. I think people need to understand and realize like that's not how these cars were built. They, they weren't that strict. Um, 
You know, another example that I'll, I'll give is the engine bay. And this goes for any GM product from like the 60s um, and even the 70s. You see restorations where the inner fenders, the radiator support, the firewall, the heater box, anything that's like a, a semi-gloss black, they will have everything painted in the exact same paint, same gloss, everything. And that's one of those real small details that I, I find incorrect. Because the fact is, all of those pieces were not painted at the same place with the same paint. Um, some of them were outsourced and they came into the factory that way. Um, so I like to see a variation in the gloss in all the black parts. Because to me, that's more realistic. And so on and so forth. So I don't want to ramble on. I'm just trying to say that like, when you're looking at the restoration, yeah, you want the car to be perfect. You want it to look really good, but there are little things, little, you know, details that there's some leeway there because like I said, they were done differently year to year, plant to plant, worker to worker. You're going to have some differences. Um, so that's just part of, you know, education, learning. And, and um, again, the, the best thing is original photographs and low mileage cars. That's really your, your best thing to go by. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's what I just want to kind of go over and talk about real quick. Because um, like I said, people are going to start looking at this car and they're going to want to pick it apart and that's fine. Um, I'm totally open to answering any questions. You know, if there's any, um, you know, judges, GTO experts out there that are going to see this, um, you see something that doesn't look right or you question, like, I'd love to talk to you because I don't know everything. Um, you know, there's still so much to know and you know, we're talking about just one one car, <laughs> just the GTO. I mean, you know, the, across the board, I don't, you know, you could be doing Mopars or Shelby's or there's just, there's so much knowledge to try and obtain um, when you're working on different cars. So um, I think that's about all I really wanted to go over. Um, again, only because so many, so many people have pointed that out to me and I'm like, all right, I guess I should show people and explain to people. Um, I'm actually gonna throw a picture up um, just to kind of prove that of a uh, 4,000 mile, 66 GTO. Um, that car in particular is in the Ames Foundation. Um, this is a picture I'm going to pop up right now uh, showing that throttle cable um, exactly how I explained. Um, and that's just one car. I've seen several other low, low mileage examples where that's the case. So, um, like I said, any questions, let me know. Um, this car is going to Misslewood in July. July 17th is the date of the show. Um, so, if you um, want to come out and see it, that'd be a really nice venue to visit. Um, really awesome place, awesome cars that go there. So um, that's about it. So enjoy the video and thank you. Hey everyone, I just wanted to do a walk around video of the 66 GTO. This is a car I've been working on for just about two years now and it is going home today. Um, I have not posted a lot about this car simply because we've been busy working on it and uh, just figured I'd wait till it was a finished product before I showed anybody. There's so much on this car. So many little, little details that we did. Um, I just can't go into all of it right now. Um, it would take hours. <laughs> so I'll just kind of do a little video. I'll point out a few things. But if anyone's interested in, um, you know, the, the little details, you know, really getting in depth to what we did, um, you know, feel free to message me or something. I can send you some extra pictures and things of that nature. But the goal on this vehicle was really to make a completely concourse correct factory correct car. With the exception that we knew we were going to make the car a lot prettier um, than it came out of the factory in terms of, you know, fit finish and things of that nature. But this car is almost all original pieces. Um, what is not original to the car is an NOS part. Um, so this is a very, very correct vehicle in that sense. There's m very minimal aftermarket. I mean, there's only a couple pieces on this car that are aftermarket. Um, the other thing that we kind of did with this is I didn't go on Google or look in a book or something and copy what somebody else did in terms of, you know, different markings on the suspension or things of that nature. Um, what you see is exactly what was on this car when we disassembled it, when we began the restoration. Um, 
basically trying to make this exactly how it rolled out of the plant in Pontiac, Michigan in 66. So I didn't make anything up or copy someone else. Um, the car is just true to itself. So anything you see as far as markings, um, finishes, things of that nature, um, it was done because that's how the car came. Um, I'm trying to see if there's a few little things I can show you. So the tiniest details, here's the throttle. There's the linkage coming through the firewall. You can see it's like a brass bronze type of color. So isn't it right here and up in here? That's how these came when they were new. Um, you always see them like silver, silver cad or zinc or whatever you want to call it. Um, and that's not really correct. They came in a brass type color. Um, same thing with like the brake hoses um, and uh, things of that nature. So we <laughs> went and mixed paint and had everything so it looked just right. Um, you know, hardware, all, every bolt head, you know, every nut, everything is exactly what it's supposed to be. So like I said, we went through a lot of trouble to uh, make sure this car was totally correct. Um, all the parts, like I said, matching numbers front to back, all date code correct. Um, you know, I really, I never want to sound like I'm bragging about my work, but I really think this is probably one of the most correct 66 GTOs there is because um, we just really went above and beyond to make sure we had everything just right. So I'll do a walk around here. These are the original wheel covers, deluxe wheel covers that were on the car. So we restored those and put them back on, which I really kind of like because it's different. Everyone's got rally wheels. Here's the inside. Now there's a few items we are still waiting on to really make this car 100%. Um, so if you see like the steering wheel is the original and it's pretty beat up. Um, so we're, we're waiting on a, a different wheel and we're waiting on like the wind lace here. Um, again, you could buy aftermarket, but we want to get originals and put them on so it looks correct. So a couple little items that we'll need to 100% complete it. Same thing, front mats. We got NOS rear mats here. Still trying to get some front mats. All of the glass is original. This is the glass that came on the car. All date code correct, of course. Marina Turquoise is the name of the paint. Everyone loves the color of this car when they come in here, and it is really pretty. So that's, that's how this car came, turquoise interior, turquoise paint. Might not be everyone's cup of tea, but again, it's different. And I like that. And even under the dash, I mean, there's details you can't even see. See the, the yellow insulation? They sell an aftermarket insulation, but it's not correct. So we actually custom made our own under dash insulation using measurements from original car to make it 100% correct. Something you're never even gonna see unless you crawl underneath. But that's the trouble we went through to make this car what it is. So I'm gonna put this car up in the air. We'll take a peek underneath and uh, we'll go from there. Here's a cool option you don't see very often. This is the pull knob. This is uh, creates vacuum when you pull it. Opens up the trunk. It's pretty cool, I'll show you. So this is it right under here. Uh, it has a vacuum line that goes all the way back to the glove box. It is not trunk spattered because that was put in after the fact when this car was built at the factory. So you can see that the trunk lock has the spatter on it, but the uh, vacuum uh, trunk release does not. It is correct that the tire cover is a different finish from the trunk mat. Um, seems kind of weird, and it is, but uh, these were left over from 1965, and they threw them in the 66 cars, and for whatever reason, had the green mat for 66, and the connection wasn't put together there, so <laughs> it looks weird, but that is correct for the car. So I wanted to point that out because 
a lot of people come in here and they're like, hey, that doesn't look right. And that's because it doesn't. All right, I'm gonna take you underneath the car here and show you some of the details that we have. Full factory exhaust built by Gardner Exhaust Systems. It's really nice, fit and finish is really nice. I absolutely would recommend them hands down if you're looking for a correct exhaust system. And like I said, there are so many details. I just can't even go into all of them right now. So if you are interested in knowing more about the car, um, feel free to message us, call us. But to try and put it in this video would, I mean, it would be hours long. So I'm just gonna try and point out a few things. All right, so. Like I said before, everything under here is completely correct for this car. Um, again, I didn't make anything up or copy somebody else. So what you see is exactly what it's supposed to be. A um, couple things I'll point out here that are kind of neat. The uh, tags that are on the springs and shocks. They sell kits that are kind of like uh, one size fits all kind of thing. And that's kind of what they make for, for a 66 car. But what I did is I went and had custom stickers made up. We have a graphic designer guy here in town and I showed him what I needed and uh, he went ahead and put the correct part numbers and codes for this car. So these are totally the correct tags that would come on this car when it was new. Um, these are the part numbers for these springs and for these shocks. So kind of a neat little detail we did there. Just because, you know, I don't like, I don't like cars that just have random stickers and random markings on them just because it's the cool thing to do. Um, I really, if we're going to do that, I want it to be correct. Um, I just think that's important. I think it's silly to just do what everyone else does just because that's what you think you're supposed to do. <laughs> so same thing up front here. Let me move this jack out of the way here. Same thing up front. These are correct part numbers and codes for the springs and the shocks. Again, these are kind of details that only me and the owner of the car are really going to know. But, um, you know, I have pictures of everything and I'm doing this video. And um, I think that's important just to show people the level of detail that we go into here. Um, even this is an e-brake cable here. The aftermarkets come with like a, some blue anodized, anodized like finish on them. Um, and that's not correct. They were this green color. So we went ahead and painted that the correct green color. Silly little thing, but that's just what we did. Um, let's see what else is under here that's worth showing you. Let me move this back here. All right, let's see. These paint markings on the tie rods were, were there. Those were original. And a lot of these paint markings are, I mean, I didn't work at the factory, so I don't really know what they all mean. But generally speaking, it was um, basically like a, a check mark. Like, hey, this part's been torqued, um, and, and so-and-so has, you know, approved that. So the next guy in the line uh, knows that it's been you know, looked at and checked. So that's kind of what those usually mean. Um, all the uh, grease fittings are like a, almost like a transparent red type of finish. Um, that's how they were originally. So there again, I spent a silly amount of time mixing paints and trying to make things look just, just correctly, just how they're supposed to look. Everything's painted in bare steel that's supposed to be bare steel if it's not already. Um, I have a, a paint that looks like bare steel, so we use that for certain items. You can see the body color overspray. I don't know if you can really see that on coming through the camera here, but there is a turquoise overspray on the floor pans, as it should be. Beige seam sealer, silver CAD plugs. All these markings were on the rear axle when we cleaned it carefully when we were taking the car apart. 
So I put those all back on. You can see some of the, the welds. I even went as crazy to airbrush fresh looking welds because this is a bare metal piece from the factory. So I know it's kind of silly, but that's what we like to do. You know, these cars are, to me, they're, they're works of art. And that's how I um, approach my work, that, that we're, we're doing artwork essentially. <laughs> And uh, it's not just a car you're gonna hop in and cruise in. Um, these are beautiful works of art to look at. They're pieces of history. Um, and I've just decided that, you know, if I can't do a car to, to the nicest level that I can, well, I don't, I don't really wanna do it, to be honest with you. So I know a lot of people are gonna be like, oh, the car's too nice, you know, you overdid it. And that's fine, you know, everyone's got their own opinion and that's fine. Um, this is just the kind of work that I like to do. And it's not everyone, like I said, everyone's cup of tea, but, you know, we just, like, even the trim and stuff, we wanted everything, just the fit and finish to be really, really nice. So this car is going to be shown at the 2022 Misslewood Concourse d'Elegance in Beverly, Massachusetts. That's in July. So if you're local in New England, you should come down and see the car. Uh, really, really nice show, and a lot of really, really high-end cars go there. So well worth the uh, the trip to go if you're looking for something to do in July. So that's it. That's the car. Like I said, there's just so much to say on this, but um, I can't get into it all now. <laughs> so I'll try to I'll put some pictures up at some point here um, for those that are interested. And uh, thanks for watching.